Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Losers don't shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Winners shout hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah is not for losers, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah is for winners, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah is for champions, hallelujah, hallelujah, let the champions shout hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. I serve a living God. What about you? What about you? I serve a living God. What about you? Is your king alive? My king is alive. What about you? My Lord is alive. My Savior is alive. Yeah. Thomas came to a point of personalizing the encounter and the experience of the cross. And he said, my Lord and my God. He left doubt to absolute faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's not their God. He's not Israel's God. He's not Israel's king. He's Tolu Alokwe's God. Tolu Alokwe's king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give thanks unto the Lord and worship him this morning. Another resurrection morning. Give him glory, give him honor, give him praise for your salvation, for your victory, for, for, for the glory that has been released and conferred upon you, the honor that the Lord has released and conferred upon you, how that the Lord has settled you in eternity. He settled your destiny. Your destiny is settled. You, 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 we are a people of settled destiny. <laughs> Our destiny was settled on the cross. Hallelujah. If there's anything called destiny, the cross did it. <laughs> and the cross gave us an eternal inheritance, eternal destiny. Lord, I'm grateful for my eternal destiny in the cross of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, this morning, we have come to renew as we remember the victory of a cross, the defeat of a grave, and the triumph of a resurrection. And help us to receive your mind to receive a fresh revelation of the work that Jesus your son came to do on our behalf on earth give us grace to walk in the reality of the finished work of a cross and the victory of a resurrection Help us to pass this reality down to generations from us so that they also will walk in the light of these things and pass it down to generations from them. Lord, let dominion be generational in our lives and situations. Therefore, we give praise and glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. How many people listened to that prayer? How many people reflected on that prayer? We should reflect on whatever the Lord is saying. Because if it were to be a goat that is holding the microphone in front of us this morning, the Lord will speak through him. So it is the Lord who speaks. It is not man who... Amen. Well, I don't know about some men, but <laughs> as far as men like this are concerned, men are concerned, men, plural. You don't say men is concerned, Ibonye. Hallelujah. <laughs> so as far as men like me are concerned, holding the microphone is a grave issue. And so it is the Lord speaking by his spirit. May dominion be generational for you. 
May the victory of the cross be generational for you. Meaning, you have caught it in its fullness. And you understand it so well and you've passed it down to your progeny. To generations coming behind you. So that they also can leverage it, perfect it, walk in the reality of it and enjoy who Jesus is and the victory of Christ. Hallelujah. Happy Easter, everybody. Please say that to your neighbor. Happy Easter. Thank God for another resurrection morning. Amen. 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 Now, now, listen, the calendar system in use today, world over, is the Gregorian calendar. Now, King Gregory was not born when the events of a cross took place. We must not forget that. So, my point is this. Good Friday could be any Friday you choose. Silent Saturday can be any Saturday you choose. Easter Sunday can be any Sunday you choose. Easter Monday of going to Galilee can be any Monday of your choice. But you don't choose the experience of a cross. The experience of a cross chose you. You don't choose a silent Saturday. They say silent Saturday. That Saturday was not silent. What was going on in paradise? What was going on in Hades? What was going on in hell? Keys changed hands. Authority changed hands in hell. Dominion changed hands in hell. Some people were liberated. Silent. They say silent Saturday. It was not silent. You don't get to choose Easter Sunday. You don't get to choose the resurrection of Jesus from the cross. By the way, when you're reading Matthew chapter 27, where it says there was a great earthquake and uh, the angel rolled away the stone and uh, uh, the, the women got there and, they, and he said, why seek the uh, living from among the dead? He's no longer here. He's risen as he said. It wasn't the angel that rolled the stone away that made Jesus leave. Some people in their understanding and their subconscious after the earthquake sounded and the angel appeared and the angel looked like fire and he rolled away the stone, then Jesus will come out. Ah! Error. Somebody say error. I don't know an error that could be as grievous or as grave as that. <laughs> Somebody say speed of light. When he entered the realm of death, having shared this earthly body on the cross, he needed this body to die. But that was because he needed to represent you and I to die. So he needed a body like you and I. Sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not. But a body thou hast prepared for me. So he needed a body that he could represent you, Toluwalokwe. You, Oluwashola. You, Adefemi. You, Adeshego. You, Jonathan. You, Blessing. You, Mary. He needed a body to represent you. And having represented you by dying because he needed a body to die. <laughs> having represented you by dying, when he entered that realm of hell, he did not enter with his physical body no more. That was his spiritual person operating, liberating the captives, moving paradise up to heaven from down in Hades. Uh, that was spiritual. From that Time, he returned to how he was before he took on flesh and came to world to the world. Is someone listening to me? You know, he decided to show them a glimpse of that one day. You know, when he took uh, Peter and James and they went up the Mount of Transfiguration. And as he prayed, uh, the Bible says uh, he was transfigured before them. The fashion of his countenance was altered and his garments became glistening white. Uh, and they said, ah, and Peter, out of stupor, did not know what to say. He said, oh God, don't let us leave this place. Oh, this experience, I don't want to lose it. He simply showed them a portion of who he was in eternity before he entered time in the flesh. Every work he therefore did from the cross was done in the spirit. His resurrection was not physical like that because uh, it wasn't a physical body, so to speak. 
that he had after his resurrection. He will simply appear, boom, disappear, boom, appear, boom, disappear. So no angel. Angels who are our own ministering spirits. Who do you think angels are to him? He maketh his servants uh, flames of fire. Hallelujah. Someone say speed of light. What does science tell us about speed of light? What's the speed of light? 186,000 miles per second. Hallelujah. <laughs> so at the speed of light, he appears and then disappears. And he created light because he is light and his light is superior to that light. So his speed must be faster than the speed of light. That is why I can call upon him in Norway and somebody else is call up, calling upon him in Cape Town and at the same time everybody is receiving answers because we are not dealing with a physical being. The Spirit of God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. Hallelujah. Sorry. We are sharing this morning on one of titled, You Are Not a Loser. You Are Not a Loser. <laughs> Everything we just said is not part of what I prepared. Praise the Lord. So let's go into <laughs> the text that we prepared. You are not a loser. Someone say, I'm not a loser. Hallelujah. That was good ministry by the choir. Amen. You guys had a lot of synchrony and uh, you were very graceful and the instrumentation was, was so nice. The background bass was beautiful. Hallelujah. I felt like they should just continue and continue and continue. Hallelujah. Guess what? Only the best is good for the Lord. Only the best is good for the Lord. Christ did not give us part of his blood. Christ did not give us part of his life. He gave us his all. Some of us withhold that which is good from God. And we give him those things that we can afford to lose. You are not getting it right. You still don't understand what is going on in your Christian life. Somebody with me this morning. Only the best is good for the master. Always give him your best in all that you do. Always give him your best. You are not a loser. Now, now, it takes a champion to make another champion. Do you agree with me? <laughs> if you're a loser, it's going to be very difficult for you to raise a champion because the strategies that made you lose are the strategies you know. <laughs> and it is what you know or what you have that you can give. Amen. So it takes a champion to raise a champion. It takes a man who knows the way to show others the way. Otherwise, he will lead you where he knows. Amen. That's why our people will say someone wants to give you an apparel. You first look at what he's wearing before you want to judge whether you're going to receive what he's offering you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you are not a loser. Why? Christ never lost any battle. Christ never lost any battle. Neither are we meant to lose any battle. Huh. So he takes one who knows the way to show the way. It takes uh, a lion to give birth to a lion. It takes a lion to give birth to a lion. I say you are not a loser. Why is it that you are not a loser? Because uh, it took the champion to raise you. It took the winner to raise you. It took the prince of life to raise you. It took the author of life to raise you. I have there somewhere in my notes. You know the Bible says they, they killed the author of life. I'm going ahead of myself but it makes no difference. They killed the author of life. One time John says they killed the prince of life. They killed the prince of life. They killed the prince of life. To start with they did not kill him. To start with he was not murdered. Hello? Was Jesus killed? Jesus was not killed. Jesus gave up his life. The Bible says he shouted with a loud voice on that cross, Matthew 27. He shouted with a loud voice and he yielded his ghost. And the veil of the temple, from verse 50, the veil of the temple was rent in twin. And the centurion who was there said, ah, this man was the son of God. That centurion was Roman. 
Tradition says his name was Longinus. And now, what did Longinus see that made him? He had seen executions. The death on the cross was the standard way that is, um, how do you say this? Uh, that is uh, custom made by Romans for execution. In human history, only the Roma, Romans came up with the cross as a way of executing criminals. Only the Romans. No other tribe, no other people group on earth uh, did that. And the master did, it was slow poison. You die by slow poison, slow pain, the painful death. The, the person will die, the bones are breaking, the lungs are collapsing, the person cannot breathe anymore, and uh, the entire body weight is suspended on nails, and the person is dying gradually. So by the time life is leaving the person, the final of whatever is left of life, it will ebb out. You are not meant to have energy to die. You are meant to have died long ago. Finally, the head will just drop. And they say he's dead. But Jesus gave a loud shout. He had been battered, he had been bruised, he had been spat upon, he had been pierced in the side, he had been made to carry a heavy cross. You would think there was no more energy. But he could still shout! And then he died. So he gave up the ghost. Back to what I was saying. They killed the author of life. They didn't kill him, he gave up the ghost. Author of life. They killed the author of life. Think about it. It is Easter. I'm addressing believers. How can you kill the author of life? They killed the author of life. How can you, okay, how can you arrest wind? How can you arrest wind? <laughs> how can you arrest oxygen? <laughs> Hallelujah. They kill the author of life. How can death destroy life? Oh, I have many things to say. God did not create sin. The devil did not create nada. The devil did not create sin. The devil did not create wickedness. There's only one creator, Elohim, the eternal creator, Jehovah Elohim. Did he create anything bad? No. What did God create? Righteousness. What did God create? Obedience. But, okay, what did God create? The blessing. But then there is the cause. He created righteousness, but then there's unrighteousness, there's wickedness, <laughs> there's sin. Anytime we go against what God says, everything God created has a direct opposite that is activated once we fall out of line with what he says. And then the devil capitalizes on that and drives it home. <laughs> that is what keeps happening. I need to stay with my message. How can you kill the author of life? The author of life, the owner of life, the giver of life, the personne of life, the personification of life. It was a futile attempt, but they did not know. If the devil had known, he would not have crucified the king of glory. Because in the process of killing life, there was multiplicity of life. Hallelujah. Except a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abideth alone. John 12, 24. It is when it dies that it produces more fruits. They didn't know. It was a lost battle they were fighting. Okay? So it takes a winner to make a winner. It takes a champion to raise champions. It takes a lion to raise lions. Christ never lost a battle. He has never lost. He never will. Christ fought all kinds of battles on our behalf. Christ fought. And uh, when I say Christ, I'm talking of from the Old Testament until the time he finally came as the Son of God. Amen. From the virgin conception until that time. So right from the Old Testament, we see Christ uh, in his manifestations, in his operations. Uh, Abraham fought against the four kings in Genesis chapter 14. Remember, 
the four kings, Kedalaoma and three kings who were with him, you know, they destroyed the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot was taken and Abraham had to go. Do you know the Bible tells us with 318 servants, he went, uh, he overcame four kings and the armies of each of those nations with 318 servants. That was supernatural. We always say that was supernatural, but there's something we fail to connect there. I don't have time. If you can bring it up from verse 15, Genesis 14, 15, and begin to scroll down for people to see. You will see that as it was coming from the slaughter of those kings, the Bible says, and Melchizedek, you know, brought forth bread and wine. Melchizedek suddenly showed up. Have you seen that place? He suddenly showed up and divided himself. No, no, go down. So start scrolling down. Aha, uh -huh. so 18. And the king of Salem brought forth bread and wine. Go to 17. Let's see whether he was coming from somewhere. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the salt of Kedalaoma. And of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shaveh, which is the king's deal. 18. And Melchizedek, and verse 18 starts with, and Melchizedek. So we don't see where he was coming from. We don't see anything about him. In fact, this is the first time he'll be mentioned. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the most high God. If, um, Moses had not written the law here because Moses was not born yet. In actual fact, there was no nation called Israel as at this point in time. The Bible tells us that Christ came as a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. He did not come as a high priest after the order of Aaron. If he had come as a high priest after the order of Aaron, he would have been high priest of the Hebrew nation alone. But there was no Hebrew nation when Melchizedek manifested. <laughs> Hallelujah. He came as high priest for the whole of humanity. Amen. Listen, the victory of Father Abraham at the battlefront that day was won based on the presence of Melchizedek. So that day he simply showed him, I'm here with you. I brought bread and wine. You want to enter into a covenant with you based on what I did for you just now? He won on the strength of the high priest who was with them. His name was Melchizedek. And by the time, you know, Paul was writing, Hebrews, without natural descent, without father, without mother, made of a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. He had been fighting before he finally showed up as Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we, there is something called theophany. Theo, T H E O. That's God. Funny appearance. Theophany. God's appearances in the Old Testament before he finally came as Christ. That's a theophany. That's an example of one of such. Hallelujah. <laughs> I said, hallelujah. Israel, Israel in Egypt and the plagues that visited Egypt and their deliverance from Egypt and the crossing of the Red Sea. What do you think was going on there? Christ was fighting on their behalf. He never lost the battle. Amen. He never lost the battle. Maybe we can read Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah 63 and verse 9. In all their affliction, he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them. Talking about Israel. And, it, and in his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. So it wasn't the strength of Israel. They were not fighters when they were in Egypt. They were trained builders. They didn't know how to fight battles. They only know how to build houses. But see the victory the Lord gave them. Was it their strength <laughs> that made them cross the Red Sea? We saw tactical command. Amen. As President Zelensky of Ukraine has been saying that they should be careful of Russia turning this battle to a nuclear battle that he can begin to deploy tactically nuclear weapons and uh, Russia showed them sample yesterday you know without violating Ukrainian airspace without uh, um, getting on Ukrainian soil they launched three cruise missiles from outside Ukraine that were targeted towards uh, some places amen praise the Lord in retaliation for their ship that those ones uh, destroyed. Uh, eh, the, you, you, it was precision technology. Hallelujah. An enemy you don't see attacking you from outside your territory. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, a type of what Egypt saw when Israel was crossing the Red Sea. 
how that there was tactical command. The pillar of cloud moved from the front and came to the back of Israel. And it, it, it gave darkness to Egypt. It, it beamed light to Israel. So Israel had light. Their enemies had darkness. You are light. You have light. The adversary has darkness. Whereas you can see where you are going. The adversary cannot see where he is going. Yet the adversary is looking for you. Remember the story of Elisha. How that the soldiers of Syria came to arrest him. And uh, Gehazi saw. He said, alas my master, we are done. He said, Lord open his eyes. When the Lord opened his eyes. And he saw the chariots of fire that surrounded them. He said, let's go. <laughs> oh God, let's go. And uh, Elisha said, Lord afflict them with blindness. And the Lord smote them with blindness. He tells us. These eyes, these external eyes, are just windows. The real eyes are inside. Their window eyes were intact, so they could follow him. Golu, golu. They could follow him. But their inner eyes were blinded. We see through these ones, but the real eyes are are inside. No wonder Apostle Paul prayed that may the eyes of our understanding be enlightened that we may know what's the hope of his calling and what are the glorious riches of enhancing us as saints and so on and so on. Amen. Ephesians 1. Are we still together please? He'd been fighting for them. I don't have time. There was a time life became bitter for Israel when they were in the wilderness. When I say life became bitter, they were thirsty and they found water and they ran and they rushed at the water and they tasted the water and the waters were bitter. They said, Moses, we have sworn that we will kill you. Today is your last day. He cried out to the Lord, Lord, what do I do? The Lord showed him a tree. He said, throw the tree inside the water. He threw the tree inside the water. The waters became sweet instantaneously. Have you drunk sweet water before? Hallelujah. Somebody gave me a drink. One day. It was in my fridge for several weeks. And then one day, you know, I'm a young person, but as young as I am, at my age, I'm trying to cut down on sugar. And I knew... It's a sweet drink. But that day I felt I can use some little sugar. So I poured a little of the drink inside the cup and I tasted it. The only taste was sugar. It wanted to cut my tongue. It was so sweet. I said, ah! And they wrote a funny language on the bottle. So I couldn't read that language. Weeks after again, I decided to take out it. I said, I will mix it with water. It was then I realized that it was a concentrated solution. Ignorance is not good. Ignorance can kill you. Believe me. If anybody had gone to my fridge to drink that thing, and I think somebody attempted, I won't tell you who. <laughs> Sugar. In the dilution. So that day the water became sweet instantaneously. What was the difference? What brought the change? A tree. Where did Christ die? On a tree. Christ was the answer to their bitterness. Christ is the answer to the bitterness of life. If life is bitter to you, put Christ in the equation. Hallelujah. Some people say, I, I, yes, uh, we know it's Jesus. We have, we have tried him. You are still trying him. You are at the realm of trying Jesus. You are not at the realm of trusting Jesus. There is a difference between trying him and trusting him. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That is trust. When you are trying him, if he does not answer, I will try something else. <laughs> but when you are trusting him, you have no option beside him. It is either him or him. Is someone listening to me this morning? Praise the Lord. He had been fighting their battles for them. He turned their bitterness unto sweetness. There was another time. They suffered a loss. The sons of the prophets, remember that story? In 2 Kings chapter 6, they suffered a loss. They, they wanted to make bigger their dwelling place and they wanted to fell trees to big, a build bigger place so that they could have more space to operate. And what happened? 
They borrowed an axe. And as they were felling the trees, uh, the axe head, the axe head. What makes the axe the axe? It is the head. The handle is just the handle. But the real axe is the metal portion of it. It fell into the water. Ah! Metal, heavy metal inside water. Where does it go? Down. What is the law that is operational there? What law? Gravity now. Ah, you, you read science in school. It's not all of you that did history and literature. Amen. Don't forget what you learned. Knowledge is meant to be cumulative. She understand. Eh, we keep adding to it, adding to it, adding to it. Hallelujah. Don't forget what you learned. Praise God. <laughs> Life will examine you. The knowledge you have will help you overcome the examination of life. Praise God forevermore. So the iron axe had fell. And they cried to Elisha. And they said, Master, ah, we borrowed it. And he said, show me where it fell. What was the solution again? The cross. And who is the person of a cross? Jesus. He threw it there. And the iron axe head floated. Contrary to gravity. Gravity does not bind Jesus. Hallelujah. Natural laws do not bind Jesus. Amen. So learn to trust him. Learn to serve him with everything within you. Don't do half in, half out. You are not going to maximize his capability when you are half and half. You serve him when it is convenient. When it's not convenient, you are away. You are off. You are gone. When you are in the midst of the boys and everything is good, you are part of the boys. And then Sunday morning you remember, ah, let me go to God's presence today. And that is your lifestyle. It's not going to work. Don't you think so? Can we continue in sin and say grace will abound? No way. It's not going to work. Someone says it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You're a sister in church on Sundays, but during the week, you have your runs that you do. Married men are your target. It's not going to work. Hallelujah. It's not going to work. Amen. Leave people's husbands alone. Face your life. Go and get your own husband. Hallelujah. Don't burn. It is better to marry than to burn. Don't burn. You will burn. Pastor, are you annoyed? Mm, be no. <laughs> it's because I love you and I don't want you to burn. Hallelujah. I don't want to end up in destruction. Hell was not made for man. Hell was made for the devil and his demons. Hell was not made for man. Man that now chooses to go there, ah, there's nothing our ever loving father can do about that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Fought their battles. When they had losses, he gave them restoration. Christ. Hallelujah. Finally, he, he came in his fullness. Christ manifested in his fullness. Amen. Ah, we have so much to say, but there is no time. <laughs> Guess what? Before he came, Jacob prophesied about him. Moses prophesied about him. Isaiah prophesied about him. That somebody is coming. That, that a light is coming. Hallelujah. Let, let's see something. What did Jacob have to say about him? Genesis 49. From verse 8. Judah, that at, this was Jacob praying for his sons from verse 1. But the prayers were not just prayers. They were prophetic declarations of their future. Of their future. And I think fathers should understand this. Amen. Fathers should understand the prophetic dimension to the lives of their children. Hallelujah. And fathers should be able to stand and make declarations ever so often over the lives of their children. Hello, fathers. But it is what I have that I can give you. Such as I have, give I thee. Never that quote non habet. I cannot give what I do not have. That is why, fathers, you must learn to know the God you are serving. Because... It takes a champion to raise a champion. And it takes a failure to raise another failure. It takes a man who does not know God to raise another man who does not know God. Guess what? That man who does not know God will not only raise a man who does not know God, he will raise nations of godless people. Let's be careful. So Jacob made this declaration from verse 8. Judah, 
Thou art he whom thy brothers shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Nobody. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Royalty, dominion, kingdom shall not depart from Judah. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. There will be the law in place until Shiloh come. Shiloh was a code word for Jesus. Hallelujah. Until Shiloh come. So from this prophecy, we knew that the Messiah will come from the tribe of what? Judah. And unto him shall the garden of his people be. Jacob prophesied about him. Moses prophesied about him. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Let's go there. It's good to celebrate Easter. But let's understand where we're coming from. Let's understand who we are. Let's understand where it began. Hallelujah. If you know how the story began, you have an idea of how the story is going to end. Praise God forever. Praise God forever. Amen and amen. Are we still together, church? Christ Jesus is our everything. Help me tell your neighbor, you are not a loser. Huh. Deuteronomy 18 from 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brothers, like unto me, unto him you shall hearken. Moses was saying he's going to be like me. He will lead the people. He will be from us, among us. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God. Because that day, that day, the Lord spoke to them. They told Moses, you keep saying God spoke to you, God spoke to you, he said to you, we too, we want to hear his voice. Ah, what is it going What's the, what's the big deal about you? We too, we want to hear the voice of that God. And God said to Moses, it's not a problem, they will hear my voice. When they heard, they were trembling. When they heard, they wanted to die. They said, Moses, 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 enough, 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 enough. Anything you tell us from God, we will hear. We don't need to hear directly from him again. You see now. So that's what led to this. And the Lord now told them, I'm going to raise for you. Somebody like Moses from among your brethren, him you shall hear in all things. 16, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire anymore, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that, that, that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Who was this? Jesus. What did Jesus have to say? The son doeth nothing. Whatsoever I see the father do, that I do. To buttress the prophecy of Moses. Praise the Lord. At another time, he said to them, It is whatever I see the father do, that I do. So whatever he sees the father do, were the things he did. Whatever the father said to him were the things he said. So when was it that the father said things to him? When was it that the father showed things to him? Have you forgotten that Jesus had a prayer life? Have you forgotten that Jesus had time that he spent alone with God? Have you forgotten that scriptures will tell us that he was in a place one day praying and when he sees his disciples said oh God teach us to pray why will somebody ask to be taught to pray if the person has not been watching you to see that you have a prayer life you have a prayer style you have a prayer pattern you are a believer no prayer life no prayer style no prayer pattern you just live anyhow God is not anyhow in fact because you pray anyhow part of the prayer you pray was, Lord give me a husband any husband, does anything, and you got anything, and now you are complaining. Who asked for anything? Is it not you? From your anything prayer life. Can we have ordered, disciplined lives of prayer? Amen. They said, teach us to pray, as Moses taught, the, as, as um, yeah, like um, Moses taught uh, his disciples to pray, or something like that. Amen. John, like John taught his disciples to pray. Teach us to pray. Praise the Lord. When we were to do WAEC, I don't know, I think it's SSE they call it now. When we were to do WAEC, we used to call it Baba Yaba in those days, you know. I had a friend then, still my good friend. 
When we're in form two, his brother, his elder brother died. His elder brother was, was a part two or part three medical student at the University of Ife. And he died. And that shook their family. And it was only my friend that was the male child that was left. And his father, his father never trusted him with success. His case was, can any good thing come out of Bringer's life? So, the man or the one that he had very high hopes for was the one that died. He was now left with Bringer. Ah! He now said, where do I start from with this boy? He was cross-eyed. He was a bully. He was always fighting. He was a truant. He wouldn't attend classes. When they report him, where were you on social -so day? He was at the back of the dormitory fighting. Classes were going on. But when his brother died, he now sobered up. He now wanted to become my friend, but he was notorious, so I, I avoided him. Ah, I wouldn't allow someone to come and kill me. <laughs> because he was always fighting. He now said he just lost his brother. Ah, and then that, you know, softened my heart. And he now said he wants to be serious, that he needs to prove his parents wrong. I said, eh. And guess what? His father came, spoke to the bossa. The bossa gave Binga his official residence because the bossa had another house in town. He now said, I should move in with him. That's how I started living in bossa's house. We left dormitory. <laughs> we could cook our own food and so on. Can you imagine? But what he was actually after was mathematics. He said, without mathematics, that he will, he will miss it. So he said, Tulu, you know mathematics. Please help me. Ask me what Benga had in mathematics. It was P7. But his P7 in mathematics was, they celebrated it in his house. They said, Benga, you had P7 in mathematics. They said, ah, they said, oh, it's too low. It's, so they, he saw that I knew mathematics. So he was attracted to me for mathematics. They saw that Jesus had a life of prayer. They were attracted to him for prayer. What is somebody going to be attracted to in your life? Your wigs, Zavi. Your wigs. Oh, sister, she has wigs, man. Ah, one look on you know, She used one on Sunday. It was so nice. 16 inches, you know. Ah, in fact, nice. Ah, she, hey, hey, Brazilian, you know, for me. How come you don't have Ijebu wigs? Somebody should brand one and call it Ijebu or Omoluabi. You know, have a fashion line like that. But that's what somebody's attracted to. It's good, though. <laughs> but there are better things that somebody can be attracted to in you. Praise the Lord. Is someone listening to me this morning? Hallelujah. Hmm. So, Moses prophesied about him. Isaiah prophesied about him. Isaiah 7 and 13. And he said, hear ye now, O house of David. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 13. Hear ye now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Very clear, very express, very specific. Over 700 years before it happened, it was declared. 700 years. Over 700 years. God does not make mistake. Hallelujah. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And what does Emmanuel mean? God with us. When Jesus was born, God with us. So the same Isaiah could go ahead in chapter 9 and verse 6 and say, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. That prophecy is not about Christmas. It's beyond Christmas. Amen. And and the government shall be upon his shoulder, dominion. And his name shall be called Wonderful. His name shall be called Counselor. His name shall be called the Mighty God. His name shall be called the Everlasting Father. His name shall be called the Prince of Peace or the Author of Peace. That's his name. Christ finally came as the image of the Father. Colossians 2 and verse 9. For in Christ Jesus dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. In Christ dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Hebrews 1 and verse 3. What does it say? In the NIV, I want to read from the NIV. The sun is the radiance of God's glory. The radiance of God's glory. And the exact representation of his being. Hallelujah. Let's read together. One, two, let's go. The sun is the radiance of God's glory. And the exact representation of his being. Meaning you see the sun, you see the father. He's the exact representation. Not the exact likeness. The word representation is more than likeness. 
if I look like you and I don't have your, your, your authority to represent you, it's still nothing. Hallelujah. My son may look like me, but he cannot commit me. If I don't give him the express permission to commit me. So he can sign in my name. When I say you can sign in my name, you can speak in my name. You can commit me even when I'm not there. Because I've given you the power of attorney. That's what that scripture is saying. Let's go back there. Hebrews 1 and 13 or 3. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. Meaning, you see the son, you see the father. He said, Philip, has thou not seen me? How come you're asking? Show us the father and that sufficeth us. As long as you see me, you have seen the father. That was what he said to Philip. Amen. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. Ah, if we get to know his word, we get to know his power. The Bible says you err, for you neither know the scriptures nor the power of God. The scriptures are the power of God. Let them live in you. Let the scriptures be alive in you. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another in psalms and hymns and so on. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. Hallelujah. Let your spirit dwell in the word. Let the word dwell in your spirit. Let one house the other. Let your spirit be a house for the word of God. I'm still there. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. So when the sun came, the glory of God came. So Christ today is the power of God. Christ today is the wisdom of God. Christ today is the power of God. Christ today is the wisdom of God. Christ the power of God. Christ the wisdom of God. The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. You are not a loser. Why? The winner is in you. Christ in you, the winner in you, the hope of glory. There is assurance of glory. As long as Christ is in you, you are not a loser. Hallelujah. The fullness of the Godhead in bodily form is the one dwelling in you. Hallelujah. The power that created the visible and the invisible is the one dwelling in you. You are not a loser. As you face your exams, you are not a loser. As you face your career, you are not a loser. As you go through life, you are not a loser. Listen, the seed of glory lives inside you. Hallelujah. It is not a dead seed. It's not a dead seed. Some seeds are dead, but this seed is living. Hallelujah. Uh, this seed is living. Amen. Uh, this seed is living. Amen. We are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. <laughs> The seed of God that endures forever. That's the seed that is in you. If truly you are in Christ, there is a seed that is alive in you. That seed cannot be destroyed. That seed cannot be damaged. Jesus was not meant to be conceived. Jesus was not meant to be born. Jesus was not meant to live. Not only was he conceived, not only was he born, not only did he live, he died and he rose victorious. Everything the devil put in his way, he crushed, he crushed, he crushed, he crushed and told the devil, I created you. For all things were made by him and for him. Whether principalities or powers or thrones or dominions, all things were made by him and for him. For without him was nothing made that was made, including the devil. Hallelujah. But one thing the devil tries to do is to make you forget who you are. Is to make you not to realize who you are. Is to box you in a corner and isolate you. Praise God. Praise God. The devil wants to isolate you. Don't allow him to isolate you. He wants to isolate you. When he piles pressure, 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 you now suddenly start getting depressed. And uh, he makes you see more negatives and you become more depressed and more depressed and you keep going down and you keep going down because he does not ever want you to remember that you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the wonderful light of a dear son of God. He does not want you to remember where you are seated. Where are you seated? Where are you seated? I can't hear you. Where are you seated? The believer in Christ. In the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Are the heavenly places under? Are the heavenly places below? Are the heavenly places beneath? The heavenly places are where? Above. Hallelujah. Amen. That's where you are seated. You are not even standing. When you are seated, it connotes authority. It connotes peace. It connotes control. It connotes dominion. You are in dominion. You are in authority. Let's preach together. Everybody stand up. I am in dominion. I am in authority. I am in control. I am in peace. I sit enthroned in the heavenly places at the right hand of Jesus Christ himself. I am not ordinary. I am a winner. I am not a loser. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. So he was king. 
He was authority. He was master over sin. Christ was master over sin. Matthew tells us, Matthew 1, 21, he shall be called Jesus. Why? He shall save the people from their sins. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Matthew 27, from verse 50, you can go there. Verse 50, Matthew 27, verse 50. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, did what? Yielded up the ghost. Verse 51. And behold, somebody say, behold. How does the Yoruba Bible put, put behold? Yoruba Bible. Sir? Kiesi and behold. Kiesi and behold. Let your ear go in that direction. Ear is life. Kiesi, put attention there. Behold. Take note. Kiesi, take note. Hallelujah. I like that language. It's very expressive. Kiesi. Amen. You can name your child Kiesi. I won't name my child. <laughs> and behold, so behold, take note of that. The veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks were broken. The rocks were splittered. The rocks were scattered. The veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. It has a meaning. It wasn't as if God wanted to display force. So they will see what God, it had a meaning. Before I go too far. You know before Jesus got to this point, they had arrested him in the garden. Ah, even his arrest was supernatural. Where was he when they came to arrest him? At the place of prayer. Prayer was his lifestyle. Hallelujah. The garden of Gethsemane. Amen. And they came, led by Judas. We have come to arrest the one that is Jesus of Nazareth. What did he answer? I am he. John chapter 18 or John chapter 19, the Bible says they all fell backward. I read it in Passion. Passion says when they gather themselves from up. <laughs> he says, say, who are you looking for? You see, it's Jesus of Nazareth. You know, their voices can't be as loud as the first time. You came to arrest somebody. DSS. Gestapo Fashion. What's that man? The one they, they sent to Benin Republic. What's his name? So, <laughs> the king just a poor fashion like that with different kinds of guns and so on where is Jesus of the come out now you are surrounded we have come to arrest you you are surrounded why they had the backing of the Roman army and the Romans were the ruling world power at that point in time and their soldiers were ferocious and wicked do you know the Romans also were the ones that invented the death that Apostle Paul was describing in Romans chapter 7. Who shall deliver me from this body of sin, this body of death? They will latch a corpse, corpse that is decaying upon a condemned criminal. They will tie a corpse to a living person and leave them like that. After a while, the living person will start decaying while alive. Go and read history now. Those people were wicked. They were ferocious. You are surrounded. Come out now. Who is Jesus of Nazareth? I'm he. And all of them fell down. He had to say, I said, who are you looking for? Oh, God. It's Jesus of Nazareth. Remember when they came to arrest, uh, was it Elijah? They came to arrest. Ah. The king sent uh, a captain and his 50. Man of God, the king said, come down now. Elijah, out of fear, said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume you and your 50. Fear. Fire came out and consumed them. All of them became ashes on the ground. <laughs> the king said, where is the person? I said, oh God, we don't know what has happened. You, and take 50 men, go. That one got there. He didn't do due diligence. It was foolish. Or he must have felt... That first guy, I've always been telling him, you are not smart. When you are given special operations to do, you do it with professionalism. Um, man of God, I'm from the king. The king said, you come down and you follow me now. <laughs> the king said, uh, the prophet said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down, consume you and your 50. Fear! That king was wicked. 
Because if it's me, I'll say 50 plus 50, 100 plus 112. 102 men died just like that. Nobody should go. That man is a dangerous man. He sent another 50. <laughs> but the captain of that 50, the wife just gave birth. Was I there? No. I'm just trying to picture what could have, the man was wise. He got there, he said, Oga, <laughs> you know this, our job is very dangerous. Oga, <laughs> I beg you. My mother's name is Rachel. Audola, I beg you in the name of Rachel, hey, please follow me. You see, I can't command you. Who am I to command you? <laughs> he was wise. That's what happened. And Jesus turned down the power. And Simon Peter, who would always act before thinking, brought out his sword because it was the master that said, get swords. Brought out his sword and he caught off the air. Of somebody called, was it Malchus or Malthus? Cut off his hair. <laughs> Thank God for the gospel accounts. Listen, for you to always understand the life and times of Jesus, always read the four. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So you can get a proper picture. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the gospel accounts said he put the air back. John doesn't record that, but he put it, I'm so, I suspect it's Luke. He put the air back. He fixed it back. He said, if you have come for me, let these ones go. So that it will fulfill what was written. He lost none. none. I've lost none out of all that you gave unto me. And he said, so he toned down the power. He faced the humiliation of the Jewish council. Because he went to the Jewish council before he showed up in Pilate. Do you know everything that happened to Jesus there was you, was me? When he was spat upon, that was me that was spat upon. When he was slapped in the face, that was me that was slapped in the face. Why? He was me. Did you hear what I said? When the crown of thorns were placed upon his head and they were ridiculing him, he was me. That was me, the crown of thorns. And there are a lot of blood vessels around the head and the thorns pierced those vessels and so much blood must have been flowing down. That was you, that was me. And those thorns were very poisonous as well. Palestinian uh, 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 thorns, wicked thorns. Those people were wicked. And then they beat him on the head. Guess what? They put robes upon him, put a robe upon him and said, hail the king. And then they smote him on the head. That was me. And then they removed their robe and gave him his own garment again. If his garment was worthless, they would have left the robe in place. The garment they took away from him was of more value than the one they put on him. But the color was there. That one was purple because of uh, royalty, you know. And then they put his garment back. But at the end of the day, what did they do? They cast lots for that same garment. They couldn't divide it. They couldn't cut it up. They couldn't destroy it. It had to belong to someone because it had value. Listen to me. He went through all that for your sake so that the veil of the temple can be rent in twain. It was king over sin, master over sin. Can you go back there? Matthew 27 and 51. 50, 51, 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain when he was on the cross. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. What was behind the veil? What was it that was behind the veil? The holy of holies or the most holy place. What was the significance of the most holy place? The presence of God. That was where you had the mercy seat. That was where you had the ark of covenant. And that was where the cherubims of glory overshadowed the mercy seat. That was God's presence and uh, only one man was authorized to enter that place in a year and that had to be only once and when he entered he entered with a lot of fear and trepidation why he had a chain tied to his leg if he dared act out of line death Instant physical death. 
And nobody will be able to go inside to bring out his corpse. So they will pull him with a string. We understand that scripture. Most of us do. If, if, I can't say all of us, but most of us do. But that day, what the average man who was not from the ironic line of priests had never seen before this saw. The, the veil was torn from top down and they could now see into the Holy of Holies. Access that was denied them in the past because not all of them came from the line of Aaron was now granted. What was it that denied that access? Sin. So the high priest will first offer sacrifices for his own sin and then for the whole nation before he went in there on the day of atonement. Otherwise he will die. Sin caught man away from God. But Christ came. Can you bring up Romans? Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Ah, I say Romans. You are bringing picture. Uh -huh. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Verse 2. Go ahead. Go ahead. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from a law of sin and death. Verse 3. For what the law could not do. There was something the law could not do. What the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. The flesh in man uh, weakened the law. So everything the law said, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Flesh was weak to obey. So for flesh it was thou shalt. Thou shalt not steal. Flesh will say thou shalt steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Flesh will say commit adultery. Ah, ah. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin did what? What did he do, please? What did he do to sin? Sin was condemned, abrogated, removed, taken away. Now, access. Someone say, I have access. He was king over sin. He was king over demons. King over demons. Principalities and powers, they obey him. They just have to listen to his voice. King over demons. He was king over death. Hallelujah. King over death. Amen. Amen. He tasted death for our sakes. Praise the Lord. King over demons, king over sin, king over death. Praise God. I want to read a scripture. Colossians 2 and verse 10. The Bible says there, and you are completing him which is the head of all principality and power. Verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it, in it, it there. What is it there? The cross. The cross. It ran over them in the cross. Stop being afraid of demons. You are not a loser. The seed of the winner is in you. In the middle of the night, when you hear a cat, some people, when a cat sounds, when it meows, in the middle of the night, they say, you witches of my father's house, you have come again. See here. Uh, and that was why I left Lagos. So, and I moved to Ibadan. I told you, well, you are here again. You have authority. A bed cries by your window. Engage the bed in a conversation. Did they send you? Are you a normal bed? Or a natural? What are you looking for? Are you hungry? Should I give you food? Or you are from the devil? Ah, see me. <laughs> see me. What do you see? You see fire. You want to die? Or you want to live? The bed will go. If truly, if truly, you are of the fire. You are a child of the fire. A believer in Christ is a child of fire. What happened? What baptism did they receive on the day of Pentecost? It was baptism of fire. Cloven tongues like as of fire came upon them. Acts chapter 2. You are a product of fire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the realm of the spirit, when they see us, they should see fire. But when we are toying with sin, the fire goes out uh, and they see the ordinary man. So who do they see when they see you? Fire. Someone listening to me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Master king over diseases. I don't have time no more. As after to three, four to five, surely he had borne our griefs uh, and carried our sorrows. Yet we, we did esteem him smitten, stricken of God, afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed. Jesus will go everywhere, heal all manner of sickness and disease. And the people saw him. 
So when he was alive, he healed all manner of sickness. When he was going, he bore stripes so that by those stripes, we will continue to do the work of healing like him. Hallelujah. Master king over death. Master king ruler over death. He allowed himself to be arrested. He allowed himself to die. He wasn't killed. He wasn't murdered. He raised himself up from the grave. Hallelujah. Let's read John chapter 10, 17 to 18. I don't have time no more. Therefore doth my father love me. Why? Because I lay down my life that I might take it again. The reason why he laid down his life was that he might take it again. Let's read. Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. I, I, I lay down, I might take it again. 18. No man take it from me. Do you see that? So it wasn't the Romans that killed him. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received from my father. Or better still, this authority have I received from my father. So power over death. Acts 3, 15. Power over death. They kill the prince of life, whom God had raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. An oxymoron. You don't kill the author of life, or you can't kill you can't use death over life. Amen. Amen. Now, let me tie this up. For all that Christ has come to do, to be our reality, what must we do? What must we do? Three things, and then I'll put my, the microphone down. Personalize everything Christ did. Personalize everything Christ did. The stripes, those stripes were for you. The insults were for you. The crown of thorns were for you. The humiliation, the disgrace, for you. The betrayal was for you. Amen. Personalize them. The restoration was for you. Amen. Do you know that when you went to the grave, that was for you, so that you were not going to the grave? So that your prospects will not die. Amen. Now, Christians die. Non-Christians die. So the victory over death is not necessarily talking about victory over physical death. There is death beyond physical death. And that's the real death. Anybody who is in Christ will never see death. But will transit. So physical death is transition will transit into life. The second death is the real death. The spiritual death is the real death. Is someone getting it? Amen. What is spiritual death? Being cut off from God. You don't have anything to do with God. You died physically and you've gone to hell because uh, you had nothing to do with God through the blood of Jesus. Ah, that one is serious. We have been set free from that. So if you are in Christ, you have life. You are not a loser. Personalize everything. Christ did not lose any battle. You're not meant to lose any battle. Stay with his word. Stay with the blood. Stay with prayer. Stay with the power of the Holy Ghost. And see yourself come out victorious. Serve God wholeheartedly. And don't be lighthearted in serving him. Number two. Believe those things. Those experiences without reservation. Don't doubt. Don't doubt. Yeah. He, he bought those stripes uh, for your healing. Don't doubt. Yes, he was made poor that you might be made rich. Don't doubt it. Believe them without reservation. James 1, 6 to 8 tells us we're not to doubt. For he that wavereth or he that doubteth is like a wave of a sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's verse 8. So faith is the connecting bridge. Lastly, always talk about what Christ has done for you. Remember the story of the madman of Gadara. Jesus entered that region. He ran from afar. Met Jesus, knelt, and said, Jesus, son of God, what has thou got to do with me? Have you come to destroy us before the time? The Lord Jesus said, come out of him. Says they were legion, they were many. He said, Come out of him. And so the demons left that man, entered into a herd of swine, and the herd of swine ran violently down the lake and they perished. Remember that story. And this madman was now found, seated, 
clothed in his right mind. He used to live in the tombs. He was wild. People were afraid of him. But this man was now calm. They never knew he was handsome, looking handsome. The glory of God was upon him. Ah. And he said, please sir, I want to follow you wherever you go. He said, no, don't follow me. He said, go to the Decapolis. Remember that story? The ten cities. Publish abroad the great things that the Lord has done for you. One way of actualizing and internalizing what Christ has done is to talk about it all the time. Psalm 107, verse 2. What does it say? Psalm 107. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of our enemy. Who has he redeemed from the hand of our enemy? So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm a chosen generation. I'm a peculiar person. Hallelujah. I'm the object of the Father's love. Amen. He paid for me with the price of his blood. Do you know that uh, I carry value in the kingdom? I carry value in life. The blood of Jesus is the value placed on my head. I am good enough for Jesus. He went to the cross because of me. Hallelujah. He healed me. Forgave my sins. Forgave my past. He gave me a new name. They say, ah, pastor, you are looking good today. It's Jesus. They say, sister, I like your car. It's Jesus. Do you understand what I'm talking about? They say, ah, the way you are walking this day is, ah, you are not walking your age. It's Jesus. At the neighborhood crusade on Thursday, I saw Grandma Iba. She was dancing. She was da And at some point, her, her dance became infectious. And I saw Grandma Ogukoya, over 70. Grandma Iba, over 70. Grandma Ogukoya, over 70. And she was wearing one dress like this. Uh -uh. She was looking younger than her age. If you called her 55, you won't be wrong that day. Hallelujah. Am I serious? Am I saying the truth? You don't know because you didn't come. But those who came, they know. And she was dancing. And at some point, she will come on. Her knees were good. You can't do this if your knees are bad. Though. If you go down, you won't come up. You say, oh, amen. <laughs> you say, oh, my okay. Hallelujah. That's Jesus. So they say, Grandma, the way you were moving. Ah. The way you were dancing. Ah, ah. Grandma. Ah, ah. It's Jesus. Tell them it's Jesus. Tell them what the Lord has done for you. Don't hide it. Let them know it's Jesus. Pastor, you are looking younger than your age. It's Jesus. Sister, this, your makeup is good. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. I like the way you're always smiling. You're always happy. As if nothing is wrong. It's Jesus. Years ago, one man told me, he said, Pastor, I said, sir, he's late now, he's dead. He died this year. I said, sir, he said, I'm a smile. Would the man come? You're always calm, you're always smiling. I said, Jesu, ni, ori of any, Jesu. I said, Jesu. He said, it must be Jesus. It must be Jesus. Because once I go to play my squash, I'm they know. He said, Pastor, has come. Yes, I've come to play my squash. Amen. Praise the Lord. He said, you're always smiling, you're always calm. And now these people fighting. Oh, Bamoja. I said, why must I come here and fight? <laughs> Hallelujah. And they say, but when you're inside the squash court, you're not a pastor. I say, no, I'm still a pastor. They say, the way you play, you beat your opponent. I say, it's Jesus. Don't come and fail your exam. And they say, why did you fail? I say, it's Jesus. Oh. Because you are not a loser with Jesus. Is somebody with me? Write a report. Let them recommend that report to your headquarters outside the country. And say, how did you get this done? It's Jesus. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. With Jesus, you are not a loser. Hallelujah. You, with Jesus, you are not a loser. You didn't lose that marriage. 
You didn't lose that contract. You didn't lose that business. It's because something better is in mind. Is in God's mind for you. Is somebody looking at it from that perspective? Oh, I lost that opportunity. A better one is coming. A greater one is coming. Hallelujah. Uh, but I, I lost that job. Uh, a better one is coming. A greater one is coming. Listen, we are not of them who drop back onto perdition. We are of them who press on to the saving of the soul. We press on. With Jesus, we press on. Who is leading us? Uh, the commander of the host of the armies of heaven is the one leading us. We press into the victories uh, that he has ordained for us. Prepared places are those victories. Stand up on your feet. Let us pray. You are not a loser. You are not a loser. So in life, you are not a loser. Because we win in life, we win in death. We are not losers. Amen. Thank Him for what He has done for you. Thank Him. Thank Him for the victory of a cross. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him because the grave could not hold Him. The grave could not hold Him. So listen, uh, the grave can't hold you. Amen. Personalize it. The grave can't hold you. The cape the grave can't keep you. Nothing can keep your prospects. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, he said. So, so when, when, when he stood on the cross, when he was nailed to the cross, he became a cross. He was made a cross that we might be made the reverse, the opposite, the blessing. Tell him, thank him for making you the blessing. Thank him for the blessing upon your life. You are not under the cross, you are under the blessing. And the trappings of a blessing are yours. The trappings of a blessing belong to your children and their children and their children. The trappings of a blessing are generational in nature. Give him praise for the victory of a blessing, for the joy of a blessing. For, for yeah, give him praise for the deliverance that comes from the blessing. Now, today, every negative trend, every negative trend, every negative trend. We are going to call upon the name of Jesus and address every negative trend, every negative uh, 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 manifestation, every negative manifestation. You can always predict or you can almost predict how it's going to end up, how it's going to go. But no more, no more, no more, no more, no more to any negative trend, no more, no seasons of drought, no seasons of dryness, no more. No seasons of failure, no seasons of disappointment, no more, no cycle, yeah, no cycle of failure, no cycle of death, no cycle of stagnation, no cycle of stagnancy. Break them in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, break them. For this reason he went to the cross. For this reason he went to the grave. For this reason he rose from the grave. Break every cycle, every cycle of lack, every cycle of destruction, every cycle of stagnation, every cycle of affliction, every cycle of oppression. Break them. At the place of prayer, break them. Every yoke of bitterness, break them. We command yokes of bitterness broken. We command yokes of barrenness broken. We command yokes of drought broken. We command yokes of backwardness broken. We command yokes of infirmity and sickness broken. We command yokes of physical death broken. In the name of Jesus broken. Every cycle of failure. Every cycle of demotion. We command you broken. We arrest you. In the name of Jesus. Cycles of demotion. You are broken. You are broken. Cycles of life. Lack. You are broken in the name of Jesus. You are broken. Let there be wealth. Let there be health. Let there be increase. Let there be joy. Let there be favor. Let there be fruitfulness. Let there be promotion. Let there be advancement. Let there be increase. Let there be multiplication. Let there be promotion. Promotion. Every day every denied promotion we address you by the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus you are granted you are granted oh we thank you Jesus say Lord I'm not a loser on no count will I lose my seed will not lose my grandchildren will not lose in life in the name of Jesus they will enter prepared places they will enter prepared victories in the name of Jesus as they step into life they step into preparations that you have made and settled even ahead of them in the name of Jesus this shall be a smooth sail all true for your seed for your grandchildren and their own children in the name of Jesus so I enforce the dominion of Calvary Upon my lineage, the dominion of Calvary over my progeny in the name of Jesus to the third, to the fourth generation in the name of Jesus and their own generation will raise others carrying the fire of a generation before them in the name of Jesus. Ah, thank you, Lord. 
can you ask for fresh fire? Fresh kingdom fire to burn upon your life. Fresh kingdom fire. Kingdom fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of prayer. The fire of the word of God. The fire of His glory of God. The fire of the fullness of God. Release yourself to fresh fire. Lord, I release myself to the fresh fire. The fresh fire of your kingdom. The fresh fire burning on your altar. The fire of prayer. The fire of the word. The fire of purity. The fire of holiness. The fire of righteousness. The fire of victory. The fire of deliverance. The fire of prayer. Fresh fire. Kalu zaharu. Ivrodo salivrodo shaha. Zuske pora haya basanta. And because of a fire, I'm inapprehensible to the enemy. I'm inapprehensible to sickness and disease and death and destruction and failure and affliction and calamity. The fire burns. The fire burns unto excellence, unto greatness, unto distinction, unto merit. The fire burns unto impact and relevance and significance in my life, in my generations. The fire burns. I need somebody to pray this morning. Ruka sala hari herelesh yombala la 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 shelelosh yembele bala 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 shelelobosi zos kelevro to celebre tese tete dele kos katahaya hallelujah open doors the grave could not hold him the grave could not hold him whatever is shot in the grave take the key of David and open it and take hold of that which is yours unlock every grave unlock every grave and take possession of your possession. At the place of prayer, unlock every grave. I take the door of David. I take the key of David. I unlock every grave. I unlock every grave. Any grave housing precious babies. Any grave housing the spouses of the children of Zion. Any grave housing the joy, the wellness, the well-being of the people of God. I unlock you graves. I command the blessings out. I release the blessings. Every lawful captive you are released. Every lawful captive you are released. Yeah, you will set free the captives of the mighty. And every lawful captive shall be delivered. Every lawful captive is delivered at the place of prayer. At the place of prayer. Every lawful captive is delivered at the place of prayer. At the place of prayer. It's a new day. It's a new day. Embrace your new day. Embrace your new beginning. It's a new day. I embrace my new day. I embrace my new day. It's a new day. Let there be visitation after visitation. Let there be testimony after testimony. Let there be harvest after harvest. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new beginning. It's a new experience in the Holy Ghost. Let there be visitation after visitation. Let dry bands become full. Let dry bands begin to overflow. Let dry bands begin to overflow. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Uh, there is a covenant of fruitfulness active over your life. Uh, receive it. Receive it. Activate it. The covenant of fruitfulness. I activate the covenant of fruitfulness over my life. Uh, I activate the covenant of fruitfulness. The covenant of glory. Hey, the covenant of fruitfulness is activated over my life. Uh, I am fruitful. Uh, I am fruitful. In the name of Jesus, I am fruitful spiritually. I am fruitful mentally. I am fruitful emotionally. I am fruitful physically. I am fruitful materially. I am fruitful financially. I am fruitful in wisdom. I am fruitful in revelation. I am fruitful in the ways of God. The covenant of fruitfulness speaks concerning me. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are good and your mercy is endure forever. Take all the glory and honor, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Can someone say amen? amen. And in a resounding amen. amen. Hallelujah. You are here this morning. You know it is time for you in your heart to surrender to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one who died that you might live. The one who suffered that you might live a life of comfort. The one who was pierced in the side that you might be at peace and in health and in victory. Listen, he paid the price for your life to be a life of peace and victory. And you are saying, today, I want that Jesus to be my Lord. Just raise up your right hand. Others may be seated, but such people, you can stand. We don't have time. I will simply pray for you where you are. Just stand to your feet. You are saying, I mean business with the Lord. I'm not joking. I want Christ and Christ alone to be the Lord of my life. Just stand up wherever you are. 
Nobody's looking at anybody. All heads are bowed, all eyes are shut. But you are saying, Jesus, I need you now and I want you. Just stand up to your feet. I want to know who I'm to pray for. Are you standing up? Then stand up. God bless you. Who else? You want to join? If you want to join, please stand. He will accept you just the way you are. He will accept you just the way you are. My brother standing, can you place your hand across your chest? Just place it across your chest and say, Jesus, from today, I am all yours. Take me up and take me over. And I pray for him that the light of your glory will come upon his life. No more are you a slave of sin. From today, you are a seed of righteousness. And you flourish in that manner. And you grow in that manner. Thank you, Father, for accepting him. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my brother. Congratulations. You are born again. Let the devil know that you are born again. Amen. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him praise. Give him glory. Hallelujah.